Hello everyone. Welcome to my study table where management concepts are made easy. In today's video, we will go through the concept of DuPont analysis, a concept that has received widespread recognition as a comprehensive system of financial analysis used across companies by analysts. Meanwhile, do subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and press the bell icon so you never miss any updates from me. Before we delve into the technicalities of the concept, let's understand the background and the importance of the same. The DuPont Company of the US pioneered a system of financial analysis that blends information from the profit and loss account and the balance sheet into key measures of performance. At present, investors and financial analysts from around the world still use it widely. It helps analysts see how the firm's decisions, activities and strategies interact with each other to produce the return on equity. In other words, it helps analysts understand what is driving a company's ROE. It is a comprehensive tool to measure the operating efficiency of a firm along with analyzing the extent to which the firm is using its assets efficiently. It also helps understand how much a firm relies on debt, that is external funding, to drive the profitability of a firm. So in other words, how they manage their leverage. Having said that, let's now move on to the technicalities of the concept. Now at the start of the video, I had mentioned that the DuPont analysis blends information from the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. As we all know, Ratio analysis is the way through which we can blend the information from these two statements to come to conclusions on profitability, liquidity and efficiency. The DuPont analysis is based on ratio analysis. It combines few ratios to help arrive at the conclusion of how efficiently a firm is utilizing its assets and debt to improve its profitability. It allows to disintegrate a company's performance and see which components shaped the financial results. In its core, this is a fundamental framework for performance assessment that analyzes all the factors that affect investor returns. Hence, the starting point of the analysis is the return on equity measure or the ROE measure. It is the ratio between net income of a firm and the equity capital it utilizes to achieve its profits. The DuPont analysis breaks this return on equity measure into three distinct elements. So now let's have a stepwise look at this. The traditional approach breaks the ROE formula into its constituent parts. Here is how it works. Return on equity equals net income divided by average equity, isn't it? Now what happens when you multiply both the numerator and the denominator with revenue? Then we will have two formulas, that is net income divided by revenue into revenue by average equity. It still means the same. It still gives us the ROE. Do you recognize these ratios? Yes, you are absolutely right. Net income over revenue is the net profit margin of a company. How about revenue by average equity? Well, we do have revenue in the numerator, so it must be a turnover ratio. That's right. It's the equity turnover ratio. Having clarified this, we can say that ROE equals the net profit margin multiplied by the equity turnover indicator. Let's perform the same task once again, but this time let's multiply the numerator and denominator of the equity turnover indicator with average assets instead. And let's see the results. What we get is net profit margin that remains as it is multiplied by revenue divided by average assets into average assets divided by average equity. Revenue divided by average assets is the asset turnover ratio, while average assets by average equity is the financial leverage ratio. In short, this is how we get to the traditional three-way DuPont model. ROE is equal to net profit margin times the asset turnover ratio times the financial leverage of the firm. The net profit margin helps understand 
the operating efficiency of the firm as it tells us how much profitability has been generated for every dollar of sales. The higher the net profit margin, the better. The asset turnover talks about the efficiency of managing assets of the firm. It basically means how much sales could be generated from the assets employed. While leverage talks about the amount of debt or borrowed funds taken by the firm. There are two views about taking higher debt. On one side, taking more debt at lower interest rate will help generate more operations and hence profits. On the other side, higher debt could increase the risk profile and decrease the buffer against bankruptcy. The firm's ROE is higher when the firm has better operating efficiency, better asset management efficiency or employs higher debt. This is arguably one of the most important formulas in the world of financial analysis. The breakdown into three distinct components makes it possible to establish which of the three has the biggest influence on the changes on the return on equity. The ultimate goal is to determine what causes the measure to fluctuate so that the management knows which problems to address. If the ROE of the firm goes up, it could be due to increase in the net profit margin or improving asset turnover. Alternatively, it could be because the firm has increased its debt capital, which needs to be tackled with caution. Reason being that higher leverage is always associated with higher risk. DuPont analysis helps find out these potential reasons for changes in the return on equity. Now to gain further more analytical insights into the financial performance of a company, analysts resort to the five-step DuPont model, which is an extension of the traditional three-step model. In this, the ROE is broken into five distinct components, while the asset turnover indicator and the financial leverage ratio remain the same, the net profit margin gets further divided into three components. Let's have a look at them, beginning with net income divided by earnings before tax, which is called tax burden, followed by earnings before tax divided by earnings before interest and tax or EBIT called interest burden and EBIT divided by sales revenue, which is EBIT percentage. Increasing the EBIT percentage and increasing the asset turnover are important targets for the strategic management team of a company. While the other components are usually for the finance and treasury departments to look into. So finally, let's go through the inferences one can draw from calculating and analyzing the DuPont formula. By reviewing this series of relationships, the analyst can identify strengths and weaknesses as well as trace potential causes of any problems in the overall financial condition and performance of the firm. Using this system, analysts can evaluate changes in the firm's condition and performance, whether they are indicative of improvement or deterioration or a combination. The evaluation can then focus on specific areas contributing to the changes in the ROE, thus helping managers take the right strategic step ahead to achieve operational efficiency. I hope you liked this video. Do send me your likes and comments. If there are any specific management concepts that you would want to learn, you can always send me your requests in the comment section. Meanwhile, do subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so you never miss any updates from me. Here's to happy learning now and always.